Hello everybody and welcome to this video which is kindly sponsored by Squarespace. So today we're creating a new image page, quite so within the immediate monitors, because this is where the monitor pictures are gonna go. Perks are pretty canful or no or over the source of the for upload, but so we can readjust those later on. Anyway, selecting images, then going over to a gallery type, then removing the stock photos that they're already and going to upload the new one. Just quit the editing of the selection process for the we see some more private file structures and watch them upload. And then it's a matter of setting the aspect ratio and how many you want per row, so that's so easily configurable. Now, it might seem as if it's copying images, that's just the display only if you right click in a video image in your tab or whatever else, but here you need the little image that's not removing any data. Then we'll drop back to your notification page, put in monitors, there's some text, which looks simple, then go to hyperlink. Choose the page, select the monitors page you just created, apply, save, done. Okay, save the page, check it by clicking on it, yep, then it's working fine, right click on the image, there's the full image, jobs are good, and now there are a bunch of bonuses on the side. So if after all these little mini tutorials I've been doing you think you could build a website for maybe ideally naval history purposes but you never know you might want to do it for some other reason then head over to squarespace.com forward slash drakenfell you can get a free trial and once you're ready that little link will give you 10 percent off your first website or domain so thanks once again to squarespace for sponsoring the video and on with the main show right hello everybody i thought i'd try something slightly different i mean fun fridays are kind of the place where we try slightly different formats see what works what doesn't what people are interested in and what they're not and since I've recently finished fitting out the library, as opposed to having the books all over the place in the house, I thought I should bring you a little combination book review dash recommendation dash insight into research. So here we are, um, we're in one corner of the library, and today we're going to have a look at some books about the French Navy. So I'm going to start off with one that's only recently come through, and after having read through it i'm going to suggest is probably if you want to know about the french navy in the late 19th century and world war one this pretty much should be your go-to and given that the french navy goes from the franco-prussian war through the jeune Nicole into pre-dreadnoughts and then into their basically all their dreadnought battleships barring dunkirk and richelieu during the time period covered by this book um you know, it's not obviously complete because it doesn't include Dunkirk and Richelieu, but it gives you a pretty good idea of what the French Navy was doing in the latter part of the time period covered by the channel. So there it is, the French fleet, ships, strategy and operations, 1870 to 1918, by two people whose names I'm probably going to horribly butcher, I apologise in advance, Ruggiero Staglini and Michel Consentino, I think. Now, um, this is, this particular one's from Seaforth, but you can also get it on US Navy Institute Press if you happen to be in the uh, States. And the main reason why I recommend this is because it's a really, really good overview. So I don't know how the resolution is going to come out, but the introduction page, you've got the French foreign policy and how that relates to the Navy, which is a very important, explains in part why they went with the Je Nicole and why they made some of the decisions that they did. You've then got discussion about the budgets, you know, what the French government was actually prepared to pay you uh, as the Navy in order to maintain your naval forces and their shipbuilding program. It also goes into the industry, the shipyards, um, the technology that was available, the French advances in steel early on in the period covered by the book, and then uh, electrical power and so on and so forth, and some of the missteps they made as well. How the fleet was organised, which is something actually that very few books of this type actually cover. It tells you where the French fleet was actually deployed, which is very important when you think, okay, well, the French have got so many pre-dreadnought battleships at this point, but where are they when it comes to things like, you know, where are we going to actually find the French Navy if a war was declared and what those tactical implications might be. And then it goes through a relatively detailed, albeit concise, summary of all the different types of warships. So you've got battleships, cruisers, what they call to torpilla numerot, or numbered torpedo boats, uh, then blue water torpedo boats, destroyers, submarines, 
the minor combatants and the various auxiliary and support ships, naval aviation, which is something that you probably actually maybe don't associate with the French Navy immediately, but France was a early leader in the use of naval aviation. Indeed, you know, very, very early aircraft carrying techniques were in part led by French developments. I apologize for the noises in the background. And then you also have the French fleet at war. So that's obviously the World War I period. So if you want to know what the French Navy was doing during World War I, whilst the Royal Navy and the German Navy were doing their staring match across the North Sea, this will tell you. And then there's a list of appendices. So you've got the shipyards and various details on naval artillery and naval expenditure. And that also helps you work out where these ships were built and why they were built there. So pretty comprehensive, very definitely worth reading. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed reading it. But as you might notice over here, this is my French shelf, um, not including various PDFs and books I have purely in electronic form, but nonetheless, um, a fair amount of it is actually in French, about two thirds of it. So um, if you read French, great. Um, if you don't, well, I, I just about get by with my high school French. Anyway, in terms of English speaking, uh, works, then if, if you want specifics on why they did certain things and operational details, there are two other books which I have here which partly will address that. So you've got the French Navy in World War II, written by Rear Admiral Paul Offin and Jacques Maudal, um, as the name suggests, both Frenchmen, and pretty much as the uh, the book we were just looking at goes into what the French fleet was doing in World War I. This, as you can tell by the thickness, goes into a lot more detail about what the French fleet was doing in World War II, um, which is a question that periodically comes up. And then the other one is this, the development of a modern navy, French naval policy 1871 through 1904 by Theodore Ropp. And this goes, and this has been uh, edited as well, and this goes through pretty much the same time period as the other book we were looking at. They both start out with the Franco-Prussian War and the aftermath of it. But um, the reason I recommend this is that, as I said, this, the first book we looked at is a good overview. This is purely about the, develop, the development of the Navy. So the te various technical details, um, like armor thickness and number of guns, etc., you find in here are omitted in this, for the most part, in terms of looking at why they did things. So it's a bit more in-depth. Now I shall try and get those back in whilst the French language books try and murder everything. And then, without pulling all these out because that will probably lead to cascade failure, so you have French warships in the Age of Steam, 1859 to 1914. That basically catalogues all the French ships that existed in that time period, which again is a very useful reference, uh, albeit in more detail. There are predecessor ones to that, that go into French warships in the Age of Sail over a number of different time periods. Unfortunately, those aren't on my French shelf because they're behind the camera on my Age of Sail shelf because I have a unique and interesting organizational system. And then this lot over here, um, the other two, by the way, that we're looking at, published by US Navy Institute Press. So try and pick those up if you can. But then you have these all over here, which you might notice they all have a similar kind of spine and that's because they're all part of a series. Uh, they're all done by John Jordan with various um, additional authors. So you've got Carres, Dumas and Moulin, all listed there. And these are, as a set, basically one of the ideal references if you want to know the history, technical details and basic operational lifespans of French warships. Again, pretty much looking at the period we've just been studying. So the period the Channel mainly covers 1850 through 1950. Um, although, again, these kind of pick up around the time of the Franco-Prussian War. Now, they're divided into a number of different sections. You've got French battleships of World War I, which is probably the least accurately named uh, because it involves, you know, French battleships going back a fair way. So you're going back into the later ironclad period. If you've seen the When Hotels Go to War video, then, well, you know my opinion of French Free Dreadnoughts. If you want to know some of the details on that beyond what's in the video, this is the book to get, because I use this book extensively, when I was, as well as others, when I was looking into the sources preparing that video. 
and you'll see you know all the various interesting shenanigans that were gotten up to in the production of various French pre-dreadnoughts and to be fair um, some of the dreadnoughts as well you've then got its successor book so this is French battleships 1922 to 1956 which basically covers the interwar design studies Dunkirk Strasbourg Richelieu Jean Bar Clemenceau Gascogne and of the various options for the Alsace and so the number of ships in there is considerably less than in the first one and it's, it's a slightly thinner volume but it's actually quite interesting to see the development of French design studies from the Normandy Lyon period through to the end and just after World War II and of course Jean Bar continues to serve quite a while after that. You've then got cruisers 1922 to 1956 so that's your basically treaty and world war ii and immediately post world war ii cruisers armored cruisers 1887 to 1932 so as the name suggests that's uh, most of the earlier french cruisers which go through actually in service as the again as the title suggests into the interwar period in some cases i'm not sure off the top of my head whether there's one for protected cruisers um, or cruisers in general that also covers that earlier period um, if there is I need to get it if there isn't and it's due to come out then I look forward to it and then finally you have destroyers 1922 to 1956 which is as the name suggests covering again interwar destroyers tor and uh, torpedo boats so that's contra torpillas and torpillas ex guards and apparently I still have the um, pen and sword publishing bit that comes with that so um, this is uh, quite the interesting publication I, I actually find myself because this is all the big fast French destroyers um, and uh, definitely definitely worth picking up so that is kind of the immediate selection of French resources that um, or in the English language that I have to hand now, if the camera will follow me, you can hopefully see all of these other ones. Now, I'm not going to go through all of those right now because, as I say, one, they're all in French and they're scattered around a whole load of different time periods. But if you want to know more about the French Navy in the time that the channel covers, then these books that we've just looked at are definitely good, very good go-tos. I would recommend first picking up the uh, the new one, Stan Galini and... Cosento, Cosentino as an overview and then from that you can identify what you want to investigate more if you want to look more into policy and procedure and operational histories then the second two we looked at definitely worth a look if you want to look more into the details of the ships themselves technical details etc then all of this lot are other ones you want to go for and of course the titles are fairly self-explanatory if you're interested particularly in cruisers or destroyers or battleships or whatever so anyway that's the uh, first possible episode from uh, the drac library if you'd like me to do more of these either looking at selections of books that i would recommend for looking into a particular navy at least as a, a sort of starting point or if you want me to do a more in-depth review of specific books or something else that I can do by showing you the various resources I have in this library, then please let me know in the comments below and we'll see how we go from there. If you don't like this idea at all, then also let me know because I said the Fun Fridays are kind of a way of discovering what other things people might want to know. And uh, yeah, then we can continue with that. And yes, there are a bunch of really, really old things here as well. So thanks for listening and see you again in another video. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.